Hi guys, well today we're going to be taking a look at the NZXT Noctis 450. Now this case was originally uh, released back in April, but has only recently been made available to buy. Now you see a bit of a likeness with the Phantom series with this case, but NZXT has really amped things up, they've made an aggressive design, making a bold statement, and all of this is backed by a decent blend of innovation. Noctis 450 is a mid-tower chassis, and it comes with four cooling fans, lots of space for high-end components, and handy features such as a PWM fan hub and LED lighting. So right now Noctis 450 is available to buy in the UK for £110, over in the States $130. Now this case is jam-packed with lots and lots of features and by the end of the video we should be able to gauge whether it really is worth that price tag. So we're now going to begin our video today guys and we hope you enjoy it. So starting at the front of 450 we have this large plastic fascia which has a line running down the very centre which creates this fold. Now throughout this design NZXT has used a matte low sheen finish which is really sleek and that's uh, soft to touch. There are two key areas for ventilation since the front cooling fans are intakes we need to pull in the air from the outside of the case. And you'll also notice there are no five and a quarter drive bay covers on 450, you know, this is a trend that we're kind of seeing more and more of in the case production as enthusiasts are progressively phasing out those old optical drives in favour of stuff like USB. So this uh, front panel here detaches from the chassis and underneath the first thing that you're going to come into contact with is this large dust filter. Now NZXT has given this dust filter the magnets to help it attach to the chassis and there is a small pocket there to help guide it in. Now behind this filter there are a trio of FN V2 120mm cooling fans. So 450 is pretty much aggressive on that cooling front. These fans are really going to generate a decent amount of airflow across the system. And there are also the mounting holes there for two 140mm fans and then later on we're also going to have a look at what cooling options we can house inside the case. Now located at the top of 450 we have just a small selection of ports which consist of a large power button, headphone and microphone jacks, two USB 3 ports and two USB 2 ports. And again as we saw at the front the top section here lends itself to having this design with these strong and sharp contours and then combining that matte plastic and some ventilation for the cooling inside. Now the top fascia can be detached to allow us better access into the top section. I'm going to look at this area in a bit more detail when we go inside. Moving on to the side panels, on the prominent side we have this part windowed area which allows you a bit of a view inside the case. 450 actually has some interesting LED lighting uh, which we're going to take a look at as we go into the video. But through that window there you're going to be able to see the NZXT logo lit up. Now over on the reverse there is simply a solid panel with no significant features. Now both side panels use a dual form screw configuration for the fitment. Uh, and taking that side panel off on the primary side you can see we've already installed our ATX test rig uh, as this is the biggest form factor that this case can accommodate and then over on the reverse side you can see there we've got a bit of a glimpse of the features and the cable management so as we move inside for a closer look at the actual features of 450 let's start with the power supply. You can see here we've got this compartment which completely shields the power supply and any of those cables coming from it. So for the installation it's necessary to feed the power supply through that gap in the back. Now the great benefit of having this compartment is that everything looks super refined and really tidy. And then underneath there is this detachable dust filter and that can be taken out and cleaned. On top of that compartment, NZXT has included two mounting plates for SSDs, which is a really creative use of space. Now these two plates here use a single thumb screw for attachment, and as you can see there, we just need to apply the screws to the underside for the fitment. Towards the rear of 450, there are a total of seven PCI covers. Each of those have the ventilation for better airflow, and also use those thumb screws to make life a bit easier. And immediately to the left there, we also have those circular rubber grommets. Located above the PCI covers we have a 140mm rear exhaust fan and again this is an FN V2 and this fan is of course going to be responsible for flushing out the heat. Now at the top we don't have any cooling fans included but there are the mounting calls for attaching two 140 or three 120mm fans and we're going to take a look at the radiator support towards the end of the video. 
Now there are no optical drive cages inside 450 so the usual spot for installing them has been given to the primary hard drive storage area. So in this cage here we have a total of six trays, each of these can house either the 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drives and this configuration here is completely modular so each of the trays can be detached if desired. Now the trays are simply fixed onto the chassis with these two thumb screws. Loosen these off and the trays simply lift out and then you just need to uh, attach those screws to the underside to fix the drive into place. Also found on this side there is a handy 8 channel PWM fan hub and this will help you to manage the cabling a bit better inside the case and with 450 having so many fans it helps to free up any of those headers on your motherboard. Now another great thing is that this fan hub can be connected to the motherboard via a fan header and NZXT's CAM software can be used to fully manage the profiling. Now 450 comes equipped with LED lighting so on the underside we have two LED strips on the power supply compartment we have the NZXT logo which acts as an LED and then above the rear I.O. section we also have that small LED. NZXT has placed a small switch on the rear of the case and we can sort of modify the different sections to turn them on or off. So here is a quick demonstration. Okay guys, well next we're going to take a look at the clearance options inside the 450 as this will help us to ascertain the specifics of what will fit. So for the CPU cooler, there is approximately 190mm for the maximum height. We're using the Noctua NHU12P which is 158mm in height and you can see there there is loads of space to spare. Now for the graphics card clearance we have the added bonus of that modular hard drive configuration. So in that respect we can install the biggest cards on the market and also we haven't got to worry about any obstruction for Crossfire or SLI. However, with those trays attached we do have 10.5 inches or 260 millimeters for the total length. Now some of you guys will perhaps want to drop in some water cooling kit inside 450 and we're pleased to report that this case is kitted out with some good options. So at the front, after we've removed all the hard drive trays and the cooling fans, we can comfortably fit this whopper of a 360mm radiator. This is the Phobia G Charger 360 and is quite bulky unit, it often doesn't fit inside other cases. You can also fit 240 and 280mm radiators at the front here too. At the top we have a 5cm gap between the top of the bracket and the motherboard. Now we did try to fit the uh, 360mm radiator at the top here but due to its sheer size it struggled to fit inside that top corner. Uh, so if you've got a thinner type of radiator then it should fit. Anyway we've gone ahead we've installed a 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler at the top here. This is the Corsair H100i and we can also install 280mm radiators at the top here too. So as you can see 450 is quite flexible in this department. The area behind the motherboard tray is a handy place for storing cables and in this area we have around one and a half centimeters. Now since we've got that compartment for the power supply you can see that it's really easy to keep things nice and tidy. You can actually avoid having those cables trail across the back of that tray. Right guys, well 450 comes with a total of four cooling fans and I'm sure you're all really intrigued as to how loud these case fans are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power the system up and get my microphone as close to those fans as possible and this will just give you a bit of a gauge, a bit of an estimate as to what to expect. So here we go. So that is the new NZXT Noctis 450 and from the outside it kind of bears some similarities to previous NZXT cases but uh, I think it really does enough to kind of uh, break out, break away and make something quite unique. And certainly when you go inside the case there are some really neat and useful features. You know I love the design of that power supply area where it's got it sectioned off and then we've got those SSD mounts on the top. The modular hard drive storage again is really useful too. And of course, we've also got those other features such as the PWM fan hub 
and the LED lighting. And that lighting, by the way, it might not be to everyone's taste, everyone's cup of tea, but you know, we've still got that choice to be able to turn certain areas off and or switch it off altogether. Now the cooling performance on this case is very good. You kind of expect that when we've got so many cooling fans inside. We've got the three at the front and then one at the back. And uh, that push-pull configuration is always pretty good. Now, if you want to see how this case stacks up against other cases, then please head over to the full review in the description. That is pretty much it for me today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed watching today. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys in the next video.